Welcome to J48 Ministries with Jonathan Pike, Will Bailey, and Tara Chambers, where the title of this podcast will be The Hard Days. Thank you, Will. Tara? Always a blessing to be here. Will, good to have you again, buddy. Thank you. All righty. This is a tough one. This is a real one. There are going to be hard days, period. End of story. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your occupation is. There are going to be hard days. There are going to be days that's going to try you spiritually, physically, emotionally, try your marriage. It's going to try even your relationship with Jesus. However, the beauty of it is Jesus holds that relationship. Thank the Lord. But it don't change the fact it's not a hard day. Yeah, I mean, his word even tells you that not if trials and tribulations come, but when when they come, that he'll be there and that he'll never leave us or forsake us. Tara, I want today for us to focus on that day. We might face it tomorrow. We might face it when we leave out of here. Amen. I pray all the time. I'm like, Lord, just help me. Just get me through. You know, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, I bring some of these hard days on myself. Sometimes it's things that are completely out of control. I I have no control of them. Um, Sometimes it involves my family, my wife or my kids which falls over into me, whether it's something for school or just life is, number one, taking up time that I don't have mm-hmm. or money that we don't have. And it, it weighs on you. You can act like you're okay. You can act like spiritually you're okay. You can act like on the outside you're okay. But deep within, you're struggling. You are really struggling. And what are some of the things that you do on these kind of days? And I'm going to tie some verse here in just a moment. Um, well, you're right. Uh, there's, uh, It seems like in life that there's uh, more harder days than they're not. Right. And um, so one thing I have learned over my walk with Christ is every morning I ask him, God, go before me. You already know what today is going to bring. So go before me, prepare my heart, my mind, and my soul to whatever is going to happen today, Lord, and uh, just guide me. Um, doesn't mean that uh, there's not going to be problems. Um, it just, he's there. He, he's always there. Um, and I think, you know, it's easy to praise God on the good days. But his word tells us he is faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So um, that means on the hard days. And a lot of times, you know, it's in those harder times of life. And we've talked about this before. That he is revealed even more greater than on the good days. You grow the most. You absolutely grow the most. I, I Talking about that prayer. Psalm 119, 105 comes under my memory there. It's the word is a lamp under my feet and a light light under my path. path. I pray, God, through your word, reveal today. Reveal this path of life that I'm going to be walking down. Lord, reveal problems before I get to it. It's amazing. If you've ever driven at night and there's something in the road, you don't see it a lot of times until you're right up on it. But in the daytime, you can see it almost, I I say a miles away, but you know what I mean? You can see it from a long ways off. But that's what we're praying. We're praying, God, reveal this problem before I hit it head on. Lord, reveal this so that your grace and your mercy will help me better get through this and prepare me for this moment before I hit it. But but in the worst case scenario, Lord, if I hit this problem and I hit it head on, what do I now do, Lord? And then it turns me right to Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence my help comes, comes from. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, so many times, and I'll always get back, when did Jesus, let's think back, when did Jesus go and meet with the Father? 
Daily? Daily, but when daily? First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. And we got that. Why? I got a verse on that. Before Why? his day got started, before the problems could get to him. Right. He had already addressed them with the Father. Yes, and said, here I am, God. You know what today is going to hold. Prepare me. Guide me. Um, I have this uh, prayer on the side of my refrigerator, and I have just about memorized it. But, you know, we're creatures of habit, and so I get up every morning, and I go in the kitchen, and... Your precious wife has um, gotten me hooked on a French coffee press. And so, you know, I have a, a, a habit every morning of getting that water bowl in and pour that coffee in there. And while I'm waiting on my water to boil, I'm just standing there. So there's a prayer. And it just says, good morning, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for another day. Your mercies are made new every day. And Lord, as I step out into today, I want you to be glorified, Lord. Amen. Renew my heart, my mind, and my soul, Lord, and just empty me of me so I can be filled with you. Amen. And um, I'm going to tell you, that morning time with God, he already knows what you've got ahead of you. I know, right? That's So awesome. if you've only got 10 minutes today, just the fact that you acknowledge who he is and you purposefully go to him in the morning. You know, uh, I think about how many times do we stop? Just stop, get alone, and say, where did I see God today? Yep. Yep. And in the good days, we're not going to do that as often. Nope. But in the bad days, you can sit back and be like, you were there. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. Uh, the, the, we, we've, we've been talking about them, ver them two songs a lot lately. Uh, one of them is uh, by Zach Brown and Dolly Parton. Many of y'all already know that song. Um, but in those songs, they, they, they're they reminiscing on their life. And they're saying, all throughout my life, there was Jesus. I see Jesus in every aspect of my life. And then I was telling her about another song that's come out recently, Evidence. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my all life. Right. I see the evidence of your promises and your fulfillment all over my life. It's amazing, Tara, how over and over and over and over. And, and that verse we was talking about just a second ago with Jesus prayed early in the morning is Mark one thirty five. It says, and in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, before the day, he went out and departed into solitary place and there he prayed. That's what Jesus did. Jesus set the standard and the example of what we are to do. And like we were saying a minute ago, and I love how we tied this in, and, and it was honestly an accident, but it's where you see and you look on these days, this day right now, you're going to grow the most. Through these trials, through these tribulations, through this bad day, you're going to grow the most. The most you've got to seek Jesus all throughout that day. You got to seek Him before that day starts, and just be prepared. You're gonna grow the most today. I um, I've said it in the past, and I, I, we're going to continue on this theme uh, today in Romans chapter eight because there again, it ties into exactly what we're talking about. And Romans eight twenty eight tells us, and we know. Now, that's key because we don't guess, we don't think, we know that all, not just a few things, but all these things work together for, to, for good to them that love God, to them who are called according, according to, to his, his purpose. purpose, not my purpose, his purpose. Yes. Um. You know, I think about this on our hard days, and I, I go back um, a few weeks ago. We talked about this treasure that we have inside of us in our earthen vessels, um, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So we are constantly cast down, but we are unconquered. Second Corinthians 4, 8 says, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are per perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Praise God. Struck down, but not destroyed. 
always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up with Jesus and will present us with you. Praise God. They, uh, when, when, I, when I go through these verses, we know, we know that God's working good in our life. We know that God has a plan for our life. We've talked about this. We've discussed this over and over and over. But then this hard day hits us head on like a Mack truck. And we're sitting here thinking to ourselves, why God? Why? I like what 831 tells us. What shall we then say to these things? Paul asking a question. What shall we say to this bad day? What shall we say to all these problems that have come into my life? Today, and he answered it. If God be for us, then who can be against us? Praise God. Ain't that good? Mm -hmm. You know, think about Paul. Paul's sitting here saying this. What better person to write this, to say this, than all the things that Paul had been through? All the bad days Paul had been through. All the persecutions Paul was going through. All the jail cells. Paul was writing a lot of these things from most time when if me or you were sitting in a jail cell, we're moaning and groaning. Why me? Why me? Paul is praising Jesus here. And, you know, there again, back to the other verse where we would be in down and out. Paul is teaching us right here to praise God, because you know what I believe? I believe it on my heart. He led people to Christ. In those jail cells. Not because he was defeated, but because he knew this bad day was only one day. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, the other day, uh, you and I were on the, uh, we talked the other night, and um, I, this just this whole conversation just led me back to just the other day. I was having a really crummy day. Uh, bad day. Just one thing after the next hit me, and um, anxiety set in. Absolutely. And uh, just that that turmoil on the inside of me and talking about praising God, thanking God. His word tells us. What does Paul tell us? Give thanks in all circumstances. I'll talk about that a lot because that's part of our daily life in Christ. And um, so I got in the line to pick up Gracie and Wesley and I was reading something. And it just said, in the battle, praise God. I don't care. And it it was like he was talking to me, no matter where you are, no no matter who's in the car, wherever you are, start praising God out loud. And Wesley was in the car with me, and I just did. I said, Wesley, God is so good. He's so good to us. Let's count our blessings. And then, you know, Gracie gets in the car, and I'm just doing my daily routine. But then driving down the road, that anxiety was gone. Yeah, that's right. You know, I think the biggest difference between pre-salvation Versus post-salvation. Pre-salvation, these bad days, you have no hope. You have bad days on top of bad days, and you even look at yourself, and you're like, what am I going to do? Am I ever going to get out of this hole? Post-salvation, I have hope, not because of me, but because of Jesus. I have a future, no matter how bad this day gets, no matter how bad the news is, no matter how bad the doctors, when the doctor gives you a bad, bad, bad report, bad report, he says, you are, there's no hope, but this world's not my home anyway. That's right. What I'm living in right now is it the end anyways. My hope don't rest in you, doc. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. But my hope don't rest in you. My hope is greater, higher. And what used to be anxiety with no cure, I now have Jesus. And no matter how bad this day gets, no matter how bad the next couple of days get, number one, joy cometh in the morning. Mm-hmm. His mercies are made new every, every morning. morning. But number two, I have hope. 
because of Jesus. Yes. And he's working together something good through this problem. I just got to keep my focus on him. That's right. And um, there again, what is our life about? Once we've become saved, it's about glorifying the Lord. And so um, our life, everything that we go through, you know, as a Christian, we should be contagious. Amen. There should be something so different about us um, that, you know, we, we've talked earlier about as a Christian, we, we begin to separate. We're now separated from the world. And there are going to be times there's things about us that really just irritate the demons that other people struggle with. Absolutely. But at the same time, you know, there's going to be something about us that strikes them. And they're going to want to know, you know, you face problems and you've, you've had a lot of problems, but, but what's in you Yep. that keeps you going? Yep. And that's that hope. What's that drive? That's right. That's, that's right. the hope, the hope yeah. in Jesus. Tara, we're running out of time, so I want to close us with these verses. And it comes in once again from Romans 8, verse 35 through 39, and it says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think Paul pretty well summed it up. Amen. So whether we live or we die, Christ is glorified. And he loves us no matter what. Nothing no matter how bad your problem is today, no matter what you are going through today, no matter how bad it may be, nothing, nothing. Can Say it separate again. You. Nothing, nothing. Yeah. can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Yes. I hope that um, those who are listening today, I hope this has blessed someone. Um, just know that if you are struggling, Jesus is always there. Uh, and if you um, go to YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe to us so that you can get updates when um, new podcasts are available. Um, today's been a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Everyone be blessed. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. If you have never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you would like to know how, if you want to know what it takes to become a born-again child of God, please reach out to us. Also, maybe you just have a prayer request. Maybe you just need to speak to someone about a situation in your life, and you just need prayer. If that's you today, please reach out to us on our Woodland Baptist Facebook page. Thank you again for listening. Well, everyone, that is the end of our podcast for today. If you'd like to give to our ministry, please go to worship at woodland.com forward slash give. And in the comments, put podcast. If you'd like to mail us a check, you can mail it to 114 Bayview Drive, Phoenix City, Alabama, 36869.